Hi guys and welcome to Lizzie Dean Makes, I'm Lizzie Dean and this is the channel where we make, mend and grow our way to a big life on a small budget. Hi guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing something a bit different and I am going to be doing a roasted harlequin squash video. So I was out wrecking for zero waste shopping options in the area and I came across this gorgeous harlequin squash it's called harlequin because it's obviously got the two different colors so the one side is green and the other side is orange um, and it's just so cool <laughs> i love it um, i tried growing um, squash this year but was unsuccessful so i'm going to harvest the seeds from this and pop them in a bowl and dry them out in the kitchen ready for um, planting them in the spring but I am going to make roast squash for tonight so I want to cut it in such a way that um, you still see the harlequin effect I want to get it in the middle of the green so that everybody gets a portion of both colours and um, I'm going to roast it upside down so that it acts as bowls um, and then stuff it with a variety of other things. So um, before I get started with that, I thought I would talk to you about this. So fruit squash, which we drink all the time, orange squash usually, or apple and black currant or something like that, um, it's obviously in plastic bottles. I couldn't find it anywhere, um, not in plastic bottles. Um, so we are trying out cordial. So I've got this Morello cherry cordial from uh, Blossom Cottage, which just uh, it's really tasty I'm drinking it a lot more watered down they suggest that this bottle should only make 10 glasses um, but I'm drinking it a lot more watered down than that the slight question I've got around switching out squash for um, cordials is that obviously there's a much higher sugar content in um, cordials than in most of the squashes that we drink um, I, I take sweetener with most things, with tea and things, try and avoid sugar for the sake of my poor teeth. But um, switching to cordial is obviously going to mean um, a higher sugar content. So we'll try it, we'll see how we get on with that. Um, I might make some cordials next year. We've got a lot of elderflower trees. So we've got elderflowers and then elderberries in the summer, um, which we can forage for free. So I might make up some cordials um, of my own later in the year. We've also got a lot of blackberries um, and I've got um, lots of raspberry plants which did really well this year so I might try um, raspberry and blackberry um, cordial as well um, but for now I think we're just going to try out some different options and see how we get on. Um, I didn't find anywhere locally to buy pasta unpackaged so my mum got a pasta making machine for Christmas so I'm going to wait and see how she gets on with hers and then I might give pasta making a try. Um, I also couldn't find anywhere that sells rice loose but you can buy rice in paper sacks um, and you can get rice in a lot of Asian stores loose so um, I'm going to keep working on that one. Um, the problem I have is that we don't just like basmati rice or long grain rice we like to have our Boreo rice and paella rice and all sorts of different types of rice um, and couscous and things. So I have written to a company um, up in Rugby that used to have a shop where you could take your own containers and fill up. But now they only do a warehouse and online shipping and they ship their online stuff in plastic. Um, and I mean, they've got a whole story as to why they're shipping it in plastic. But I have written them to see if I can go to their warehouse and stock up. Otherwise, it might involve um, us going on a trip to Bristol or to um, London to find one of these places to stock up on our dried pantry goods. Um, so yeah, the, the quest goes on. But for now, I am going to do this recipe. So what I am going to do is I'm going to cut my um, squash in half and I'm going to go through the um, green part and I'm cutting it... Um, from top to bottom sort of straight through rather than from um, up across the diameter 
So I'm, I'm cutting it north south as it were. halves of a squash. <laughs> Don't try that at home. <laughs> oh dear. Okay so I'm going to um, use a big spoon and a bowl and I'm going to get the pith and the seeds. Um, I'm probably going to get it all in one and clear it out later. I dry my um, seeds just on the side in the kitchen so I tend to roll them out on uh, previously a roll of kitchen roll but now I'll probably do them on um, some cloth tea towels and just uh, wash them get the pith off and uh, leave them to air dry and then store them ready for planting next year so at the moment my um, vegetable garden still has spinach and lettuce um, that are still alive but I'm not harvesting anymore um, it's been snowing and we've been rather snowed in and that seems to have put an end to most of the um, crops that were still going so I haven't harvested the spinach or anything anymore I think it's a bit burned from um, frost but it gave a very good yield while it was going well through the autumn. We had uh, the longest day of the year a week, two weeks ago. I'm trying to think what the date is today. Yeah, a week ago roughly, just over. And um, they've been going up until now really. Um, I lost them really in the first week of December when we had the first massive snow that caused us to be snowed in for a week and my parents and our friends from um, down in Worthing were trapped with us in our snowed in state <laughs> we couldn't get anywhere the roads hadn't been gritted or salted around here because we weren't expecting snow and then suddenly we got um, the tail end of the snow that hit further north um, and in Wales and Ireland and um, Scotland and we weren't expecting to be a part of it, so no one had prepared for it. Um, I don't think we ever really prepare for it in this country anyway, but we were definitely not ready road-wise in this area. So everything just ground to a screaming halt, because obviously we don't have snow tyres and things. And um, where we used to live, there used to be um, boxes of grit on the side of the roads in all the housing estates. And if you wanted to grit your own bit of road, you could. There's nothing like that here. So we would have to have um, ordered it. And how would we have got it delivered? We couldn't uh, have got a lorry up our road because it's completely non-ploughed, um, non-gritted, non-anything. Okay, so I have cleared out most of that and I am going to use some oil. I've got some uh, extra virgin avocado oil which I picked up the other day and uh, I'm quite enjoying trying that out. So I'm just going to um, pour a bit of oil into each and then I've got a um, silicon pastry brush. I'm just going to use that to brush some oil over the surface. Now this is supposed to stop it from drying out as it roasts and stop the uh, flesh that's exposed here from forming a sort of skin hard crust. Okay so I'm going to pop those in my roasting tray. 
and then I am going to prep some veg to stick in the centre of it. So I probably don't need all the things that I've got here. Um, I do want to use some carrots and I do want to use these mushrooms up before they go out of date. So um, we don't buy a lot of mushrooms but whenever we do I don't wash them. They do sometimes have um, a bit of dirt on them and things but um, I, I never wash them. And part of the reason for that is I think it's actually healthy to get some germs in your body. Um, and over washing and sterilising everything that you eat is actually bad for your immune system and therefore bad for your overall health. So I don't tend to overly wash things. Um, I do sometimes, it depends where it's come from, um, whether or not I, I will wash it. Most of the stuff that you get from the supermarket has already been washed, but if it's been sprayed with pesticides and things, even if you wash it, that's not going to get that off because that's going to be a couple of um, centimetres into your fruit and veg that those chemicals have gone. So washing them wouldn't particularly serve much of a purpose. If I've got them from someone else's garden, I might wash them um, to make sure that no animal stuff got to them. Mine in the front garden, um, I will tend to always wash those because even though my dog isn't out there, he's in the back garden, which is why I put all my veg out the front, uh, a lot of my neighbours have cats and obviously there's you know, wildlife, caterpillars, slugs, birds, whatever. Um, so I do always tend to wash the veg that I have grown. I don't tend to watch, wash veg that's come from the supermarket because as I say, it's already been washed as much as is gonna be useful to it. Um, I'm just going to go and find the salt and pepper which have mysteriously vanished again. Okay, I found the salt and pepper so I'm going to do this. I'm going to chop these down. Okay, and I'm not actually going to stuff the um, squash with these. I'm going to pop these all around in the bottom. roast them in with the actual squashes themselves. So I made the most delicious um, dish again last night that's become one of my favourites and that is carrot edamame bean and giant couscous salad with um, sesame seeds and sesame oil. I use a lot of other seeds as well in it. Um, I have a bit of a problem with this because obviously I can't get giant couscous or sesame seeds or pumpkin seeds or anything else for that matter without packaging. So um, that's why I am still looking um, for an option for those bits because I cook with them all the time um, and you just can't seem to buy them without plastic. I've been to um, Morrison's, I've been to Sainsbury's, I've been to Asda, I've been to um, Waitrose and I've been to MS Food and I've not been able to find a solution in any of those places. When I take Charlie to the groomers next week, I'm going to go and check out the big Tesco's that there is um, there and see if they've got the options. The Tesco that we used to go to in Reading, obviously because there was a very large um, Asian community in Reading and they did a lot of the um, bulk rice and things like that for the Asian community. So Tesco's might have something, but I might have to go further afield to a, Saint, uh, to a Tesco's where they're catering um, for a different market rather than the ones around here in rural Oxfordshire. I've got a load of um, tomatoes left over from Christmas so I am going to chop these up and spread them around in with the mushrooms and they'll provide some juice for the mushrooms to roast in. And 
finally I am going to probably don't need that many, but just chop up some spring onions. Okay, so that's all the veg in and I'm now going to drizzle some oil over the top, sprinkle some ginger on and then pop some salt and pepper on as well. We love black pepper in this house. Apparently a lot more than most people. <laughs> all done and that will go in the oven uh, for about 40 minutes to an hour at 180 degrees celsius and i'll just keep on checking on it until it looks finished um i could serve this with some couscous or some potatoes or something um if we wanted a carbohydrate -y, um starchy component but i think i'm not going to because there's a lot of veg um I'll see how it is when it's um, roasted. I've got a couple of those um, Ainsley Harriet spicy couscous things uh, to use up and you can make them in like three minutes. So I'll make it at the end when I see how this turns out and how much food I think we're gonna need have. Uh, that's it, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and uh, if you like vegetarian and vegan frugal zero waste cooking, then remember to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it which means that you'll get notified every time i upload a new video thanks for watching guys bye